All right, guys, this is going to be a quick how-to video of how to adapt the LS engine to a Graziano transaxle. Uh, when I was doing my project, I didn't have a lot of information out there. I was able to get some basics, but this is going to be extremely detailed and make it extremely easy for you to do this by yourself. If you don't feel the need to listen to me talk and you just want the down and dirty versions, I'll have this document available. At that point, you can just read through it. It's pretty self-explanatory if you're mechanically inclined to do this project. All right, so the first couple of things are uh, getting the parts. So the biggest pain in the ass as far as getting the parts is actually these alignment dowels from Audi. Uh, race car replicas had the wrong part number that they gave me. It took me about four hours. You're gonna need two of these. They cost me about 10 bucks. Uh, other specialty tool you're gonna need, uh, the Audi Lamborghini clutch alignment tool. Uh, you will definitely need that. You don't wanna screw up a $2,000 clutch. Okay, so first step is actually gonna be grinding out the oil pan. Um, because the Audi is an all wheel drive transaxle, it's gonna have this front wheel drive shaft coming out the front, the bottom. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to grind this lip out of the oil pan in order to clearance that shaft. There are some guys of like HCF that will delete that for you. Um, a lot of people like Fran at RCR actually do not recommend doing that. Uh, you can do your own research on that, but I decided to leave it in. Um, so basically the first step that I had to do was go through a ton of measurements, watching this will save you. Uh, you're gonna have to grind this lip out. There's two little lips. This is the back of the pan. If you start at the flat at the top, you're gonna cut out one and one quarter inches. Uh, they recommend using a Dremel for this, but in my opinion, that would look like shit. So I would tell you to get a file sander, makes it look nice and clean. So after you go ahead and you get the one and a quarter inch slots ground off of your oil pan, uh, this is actually a dry sump oil pan, but the wet sump oil pan will look extremely similar and have the same two lips. After you get that clearance, you'll see you have to take it all the way flat with the rest. And then the shaft will have Rough guess, probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths clearance. Um, you will notice that there is a cutout panel here. The stock Corvette setup uses this little block off plate uh, for your starter to keep the shit from getting in your bell housing. Um, there's gonna be this little hole there. So you're gonna have to basically extend this out, build a closeout panel. You could probably just epoxy something on there. It would work just fine, but you will have to get that at a later time. So. This next step, after you get that ground out, obviously clean out all the shavings. You don't want that stuff getting in your nice clutch. Uh, you're gonna take the two alignment dowels here and you're gonna put them in the trans. There is one at the top and one at the bottom. You could honestly do this in the bell housing or the trans, but it's really important that you start these straight. Uh, the way that I went about it is I took a small dead blow hammer and I just barely tapped them in. And then what I actually did is I took the uh, adapter plate from RCR and I used that to squeeze them together ever so slightly by slowly tightening all the bolts. So what I did is I got them started, put the bell housing on. After you get these two fully seated, you will go ahead and install the adapter plate onto the trans. Should fit nice and flush. Uh, there's gonna be one really long bolt at the bottom, excuse me, one really long bolt at the bottom and all the rest of these are the same. Uh, I believe that one's 150 millimeters, it's in the info up top. So after you get that attached to the trans, the next step is to take the RCR flywheel that's for this application and they ship it with this bearing. Uh, I have a bearing press and I thought I was going to need to press this in, uh, but it actually goes in so easy you could easily do it with a little dead blow hammer. Just go ahead and tap that bearing in. At that point, you're going to use the flywheel bolts uh, to bolt this onto the crankshaft of the LS engine. The factory bolts for those are too short and they're one time use, they're torque to yield bolts. So it's really important that when you get these bolts, uh, that they are the correct length and do not reuse the stock ones. Um, another really important thing to note is that these stock ones, because they're a torque to yield bolt, if you follow the OEM torque sequencing pattern, there's a really good chance you're gonna strip out your crankshaft. So use a little common sense, put these at a torque spec that makes sense to you, don't over tighten them. I still recommend you use a torque wrench and put them at the same. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what I put mine at just because I don't want any liability. So after you get the flywheel bolted to the crankshaft, you're going to go ahead and bolt the clutch to the flywheel. So here's a picture of the, uh, the clutch and flywheel. Uh, well, I guess you would actually have to put the ring gear on the clutch if you got a new clutch. Mine already had the ring gear on it, so I got to skip that. But you're going to use these M6 by 70 bolts, and this 
only goes on one way. So you have to make sure you get these holes lined up in the right spot. Don't be like me and think they're the same and go to put it on and then realize you're in your second bolt that they don't line up. Uh, what I would do is I would actually go ahead and I'd start these bolts lightly, pop your clutch alignment tool in there. Uh, this end should sit inside that bearing and spin freely. If it doesn't spin freely, it's misaligned and you gotta fix it. So go ahead and get these torqued down torque specs in there. Forgot what it is off the top of my head. Um, and then once you get the clutch attached to the, uh, to the motor, you're going to go ahead and at that point you are good to stick the engine and the trans and bolt them together. So what I did for this is I just had it on a, on a cherry picker and I had it on a trans dolly, easily angled them, got them together. Not too, uh, not too complex. And here's what it looks like finished. Um, there will be a couple of specialty tools and a couple little things um, that you're going to need to do. I'll point that out on the trans in a little bit, uh, but that's the down and dirty. Make it real simple for you. Uh, you will also need in this, this starter, which I don't have yet. Um, it is a, uh, it's a Bosch unit, or you can get one. The one that I got is actually made by a company in Canada. Um, when I was looking for these online, the cheapest I could find them was like $185, $200 in that kind of range once you ship them. I did find a local company named Mars Starters and Alternators in DeKalb, Illinois. I've had them do a lot of custom work for me. Great business. Uh, they got it to me for $131. So if you're looking for one, give them a call and they'll hook you up. That's a Canada-built starter too. It's not a Chinese. All right, now I'm back by the engine and trans after they're bolted together to give you an idea. Um, in order to put this bolt in the bell housing of the motor, you're going to have to pull this trans. It's a Torx T27. Um, pretty self-explanatory here. Tighten the bolts in the right pattern. This is the starter where that goes. It actually bolts in from the back. Uh, one thing that's critical here is to get the right thread pattern. It's an M12 1.5. I know these stock Audi ones are 45 millimeters long, but I can tell you that after measuring that, I am pretty sure that's going to be too long for the application. I, once I get my starter at some point this week, I'm guessing that a 35 millimeter is going to be the correct. I'll measure and update you guys. Um, these are stainless bolts. You're going to need hex head cap screws to go through with the way they build this adapter plate. And then obviously just the regular flanged ones on the trans. Here is that grind out spot that I was trying to show you guys in the other video. Um, you can see it's got clearance, looks good. And then lastly, the Corvette closeout panel. As you can see, there's that hole through there, so I'm going to have to build a panel. All right, and then lastly, if any of you are looking for an LS9 clutch and flywheel with the ring gear on it or the Audi R8, uh, that one's off a of V10 engine. I don't know if it's the same with the V8 engine uh, flywheel. If you guys are looking for any of these parts, I have them available. Shoot me a message and make me an offer.